Hey, what's up guys? This is Cole with CJC Off-Road. Today we're doing something a little more technical. Um, we are going to run down how to improve the front end on your Ram 2nd Gen. Now let's dive in and figure out exactly what is causing a death wobble or play on the front of your truck. The truck we have in today's video, in my opinion, is the perfect candidate. This is the typical 2nd Gen you see driving around town, has a couple hundred thousand miles on it. Uh, it has been on a death level from time to time. So this is exactly the truck that we would like to go through and basically upgrade the front end on. Um, you probably see all kinds of different opinions. Oh, this fixes death wobble, that fixes death wobble. Uh, the only real proper way to go through and address death wobble or play on these trucks is to comprehensively go through one step at a time through each section of your truck steering and basically figure out what's moving. Now, um, it may seem intimidating, right? Um, but it's actually very simple and we're gonna try to help make this a little bit easier for you guys to help figure out basically what's going with your own truck in your driveway so it's not some big scary thing, but you know, basically a real easy way to help diagnose your truck. Best part about this is you don't need a single specialized tool, so let's go ahead and get started. When diagnosing the front of this truck, it will be very helpful to have a second person to give you a hand. Um, doing that basically will allow you to really take a look and see what's going on in the front of the truck and help remove a lot of the mystery behind this process. Uh, so to start, we actually don't necessarily need to have the truck on. Uh, go ahead and key the truck on. Have somebody go ahead and rock the steering wheel back and forth. The truck does not have to be running yet. Uh, but you'll rock the steering wheel back and forth about a quarter of a turn. And you'll basically want to look from your truck's firewall, where the steering shaft comes out of the back of your steering wheel, all the way down to the steering box. So with the truck not running, we're not so focused on what's going on down below, your steering linkage, all that. This is strictly for your truck's steering shaft and your steering box. So if you're getting a ton of movement with the truck not running, that's already you know, a sign basically that you have a ton of play from your steering box on up. Um, you can pretty clearly see this if you pop the hood open, have that other person rock the wheel back and forth that quarter of a turn. Uh, you can actually watch the joints on your truck's steering shaft and basically look for movement on those joints. Uh, keep in mind, the steering shaft is usually not the primary culprit behind slop on these trucks, but it can be a contributing factor. We also like to start here just because this is the initial point of contact behind your truck steering column for where you're going to start getting movement on these trucks. Um, another thing with the truck not running, if you're getting a lot of movement here, if it's not in your steering column, it's going to be in your steering box. So if your truck has a you know, relatively intact steering shaft, but you're getting a ton of play with the truck not running, chances are that play is going to be in your steering box. Um, it's a very common thing on these trucks. If your truck is all original in terms of steering box and front end components and it has a ton of miles, it's very likely you're gonna have a lot of this play right here. Um, this is a great start, basically working our way down with what's moving on these trucks. So again, truck's not running, you're getting a lot of movement, it's probably your steering box. Um, if there's visible movement in the, in the steering shaft, it's gonna be that as well. Um, this is basically step one as we work our way through the front end of your truck. Next step is when we're actually going to turn on the truck on. If your truck has a manual transmission, we highly recommend putting your parking brake on, making sure the truck's not in gear. Automatic transmission, obviously, make sure it's in park. So you'll turn the truck on. Same thing, have someone rock the steering wheel back and forth, roughly a quarter of a turn, and uh, you'll want to basically crawl underneath the front of the truck. Uh, first thing we're going to look at is your track bar. Track bar is not your steering linkage where the, where the pitman arm's turning back and forth, where your steering's going back and forth. The track bar is actually slightly behind that. The track bar is the connection point that goes from your truck's frame all the way down to the passenger, passenger side of the axle. Um, if it's stock, this is usually one piece that just bolts right to the frame. And then again, connects that connection point on the passenger side of your front axle. Pretty much guaranteed if your truck's on the original track bar, you're gonna find that it's just shot beyond belief. This is usually going to be one of the most worn out components on the front of these trucks. Uh, telltale signs of this movement is going to be um, on the frame side, it's it's a ball joint style design on the end of that track bar. You'll see, you know, basically the track bar moving back and forth, almost popping on that side. On the axle side, it act, where it bolts through, you act, if you look closely, you may see movement. At actually, the track bar, uh, right where the bolt goes into the axle through that track bar, you'll you'll actually be able to uh, detect movement there by watching it. Again, this is a very common thing, um, especially on older trucks with larger tires. This is usually one of the first pieces to wear out. Um, chances are, I know at the beginning of this video I said uh, you're not going to need a lot of the components. Chances are, if, this, if your track bar has not been replaced, you're pretty much always going to be replacing the track bar in the front of these trucks if it hasn't been done in the past. Uh, this is, I'd say, the number one culprit of movement on the front of these second gen trucks. When people just say, hey, you know, second gens don't drive like third gens, 
chances are they're referring to the flawed track bar design on these second gen trucks. Um, rather than having a bolt through mounting point on both sides, second gens actually use a ball joint style mounting point on the frame side. This is very infamous for wearing out. It may not even be super visible when you're looking at your front end's movement, um, but it is very, very likely that this is going to be the biggest contributor toward movement, toward wandering on the front of your truck. Uh, we provide a few different options for adjustable track bars for these trucks. They all address the situation by changing the mounting point to a third gen style bolt through on both ends. This is, in our opinion, the proper way to solve this issue on these trucks. And it is what we um, basically start with for most second gen builds when we're tightening up the front end on, the, on these trucks. Now again, uh, for the steering linkage, the next step, we're gonna work, right, work our way from the top down. So you'll start the pitman arm, as someone rocks that steering wheel back and forth with the truck running, watch the joint, the tie rod end of the pitman arm, down to where the, the upper drag link connects the lower portion of your steering and all the way across. If you see any sort of lateral movement or popping or even vertical movement, that thing's toast. It's highly recommended you replace it. Um, I've found that just like the track bar, nine times out of 10, when you see a second gen with sloppy steering, the one of the main culprits is your steering linkage. Um, so I'd say it's safe to say if it hasn't been replaced on your truck or it's been replaced with cheap parts, you'll notice this movement almost immediately. And again, we have a few different solutions for this to address this movement. Um, most popular with, as of filming this video, is Synergy. Great replacement where you can actually replace each of the tie rod ends individually. But again, uh, steering linkage, it cannot be emphasized enough. It is probably right behind the track bar, the most common culprit of play on a second gen truck. One thing I've noticed when skimming forums and Facebook groups, a lot of people say put on the 08 and a half, you know, fourth gen style stock steering on these trucks. We actually highly recommend against that for a couple of reasons. The geometry is entirely wrong. For earlier second gen trucks, the taper is actually wrong, so you're not getting a proper seat on the tie rod ends. On the newer trucks, in most cases, is actually too wide, so you can't get the proper toe when you align it. Yeah, it'll temporarily address the front end being sloppy, but you're not gonna be able to align the truck correctly, and you're still kind of back at square one with that, with a truck that's not quite driving as you want it. So we highly recommend staying away from that and going with a dedicated uh, second gen specific steering linkage setup for your truck. Last but not least, we'll go ahead and turn the truck off and we are going to look at your truck's ball joints. Uh, this is the last piece of the puzzle, also a very commonly worn out piece on these trucks. Um, so you'll turn the truck off, you'll have someone jack or you'll jack the truck up very slightly. So, you know, one of your front wheels is very slightly off the ground. You'll need a large pry bar for this if you have access to them or at least something you can pry upward with. And basically with a little bit of space off the ground between your tire and the ground, You'll jam the pry bar or something similar underneath the tire, and you'll actually lift up on the tire with that pry bar. Again, it helps out a second person because one person can be lifting with the pry bar while the other person actually watches both the upper and lower ball joints for movement. And what we find is any kind of vertical or lateral movement of any kind of these ball joints, it's safe to say they are toast. Now, um, you may say, hey, I just put on ball joints on this truck you know, a couple months ago. If they're not quality, you know, higher end aftermarket ball joints for these trucks, say if they're just generic parts store replacements, Unfortunately, they tend to have a very short shelf life in our experience with these. Um, so it, it, it is very possible that you have a newer set of parts store ball joints that's already showing wear. And that's why we actually don't list those on our webpage uh, where we sell the parts for the front of these trucks because we're trying to get you know, more quality aftermarket parts that are meant to last a long time under these trucks. Slightly unrelated, but still very important uh, related to keeping the front end of these trucks tight is control arms. Um, while you're under the truck doing all this diagnosis, rocking the steering wheel back and forth, you know, running it, all that, uh, it can't hurt to go ahead and take a look at your truck's front control arms. Uh, same thing, you do it while, while either, you know, basically driving the truck slightly forward, slightly backward, or even rocking the steering wheel back and forth. Any kind of lateral movement in those track bar, or in those control arm joints will actually result in play in the front of your truck. While I've yet to see death hobble specifically caused by worn out control arms, it can actually contribute toward a, a you know, loose feeling front end. So again, um, not as important as everything else we've talked about as far as keeping the front end tight, but also something worth taking a look at if you're trying to fix the front of your truck the right way. Last part of the puzzle, uh, this is no longer one of the steering hard parts on the front of your truck, it is tires. So basically as we work our way through the front of these trucks, you can have all the best parts on the front of your truck, but if your tires have broken down sidewalls, your truck can still get death wobble. Uh, we've had several customers where they buy all the good stuff for their trucks and everything is tight, right? They go through, you know, the, the test where they rock the wheel, everything looks good under the front end, they're still getting death hobble. Every single instance where we've seen this be the case, it's always been the tires. 
tires, uh, they're high mileage with broken down sidewalls, cheap tires, things like that, they can all contribute to death wobble. And what happens is, you know, death wobble, a lot of it's rhythm based, right? So as the front end starts to move back and forth in this rhythm, if your sidewall, if your tire sidewalls aren't doing, you know, everything they can to, to effectively support the weight of the front of your truck, it can allow those tires to get in that rhythm and basically work its way up the front end. Uh, so it's very critical that as you're going through your truck and, and putting nice parts underneath it, that you've all, you're also addressing the tires as well. Uh, if you'll notice throughout our different builds, we're always running Toyo and Neto tires. So there's, there's a reason for that is because they have very thick sidewalls. Um, so again, it's very important to make sure you have very good, high quality tires under your truck. Um, you'll see all kinds of people online, oh, just put these cheap tires on there, it's fine. Every single time, um, you know, we, we talk to people about this and kind of work through, with them through troubleshooting the front of their truck. It's, it, you know, cheap tires are generally always a culprit. So we can't emphasize that enough. Uh, quality tires, uh, compare, you know, combined with going through all the front end components, we're, we are positive if you do all these things and everything's tight and installed correctly that your truck will not death wobble and it will be significantly tighter than how it started out. So now that we've walked through every step of what is worn out on your truck, um, we actually have another video where we actually go over each of the individual upgrade pieces to address these issues. So uh, we went ahead and provided a link for you. Go ahead and click that link and we'll go over each of the upgraded pieces uh, depending on what your truck needs specifically. Thank you guys so much for following along. We hope that we've helped basically remove some mystery from um, addressing the slop on the front of these second gens. We've gone step by step how to diagnose what's wrong with it, as well as provide solutions for how to address those concerns. So we really want to help make this as easy as possible for you guys to get your trucks driving properly. We've done it on ours. We know these parts work really well and we're very happy with the outcome. So um, we understand there still may be some questions even after watching this. So if you guys have any specific concerns for your particular build, or particular uh, questions on your specific truck, we're happy to help out. We're, you know, again, we answer these questions day in, day out, so there's no surprises for us anymore. And uh, we're happy to share the knowledge we've gained over the years working with these trucks with you guys. So we have a lot more similar content coming up. If you wanna learn more about how to improve how your truck rides and drives, there's a lot more coming on this channel. A lot of different videos, including my own personal build that we're gonna be doing another video on shortly. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much.